After the whistle starts in Penns Valley, where Ty Watson makes a man fall to his knees, taking it 71 yards to the house. But would that be enough to take down the Blue Devils? Hi, I'm Mac Young. We'll have more from that game and others from around the first week of District 6 action. And I'm Matt Scalzo. We'll also take a look at Penn State's final days in fall camp as the team prepares for its season opener in eight days. That and more is coming up on After the Whistle. Bishop Guilfoyle looks to start hot after making a deep playoff run last season against the hosting Bald Eagle Eagles in our game of the week. Bald Eagle area hosting Bishop Guilfoyle to open the season. BG, the returning district champ in the middle of the first quarter. Chase Kissel rolling out left, launching deep down field, and Braden Riley comes down with it at the three. And the very next play, Caden Winant punches it in. Makes it 7-0 BG. Beginning of the second quarter, Carson Nagel finds Nicholas Weibel down the sideline, cutting his way into the end zone, shaking past a few defenders. En route to a tie the game at 7-7. Towards the end of the second quarter, Nagel's pass nearly intercepted, but Cahill Burns comes down with it for a 42-yard gain on fourth down. Look at that hand-eye coordination. Late in the fourth, it's Cameron Dubs with the dagger. Punching it in makes it 17-7. Bald Eagle with less than two minutes to play, and that's how it would end. The Golden Eagles will go on to win this one 17-7, picking up their first win since 2006 over the Marauders. A big win in their season opener. The Golden Eagles travel to Central Cambria, looking to stay hot. The Marauders on the flip side host Bishop McCourt in search of their first win. And now I'm joined in studio by Game of the Week reporter Justin Chevalella. And Justin, it was a def defensive battle from the get-go. What stood out to you about this Bald Eagle defense? Oh, well, Matt, in short, they controlled the point of attack. That's in the trenches. Their defensive line just won the battle time after time against the offensive line of Bishop Guilfoyle, which we had come into the season thinking was going to be a great offensive line. And not to take anything away from them, it just happened to be that Bald Eagle was the better team in the trenches tonight. Let's take a look. Midway through the opening quarter, running back Caden Wyatt punched in the first touchdown of the campaign for Bishop Guilfoyle, giving the Marauders a 7-0 lead. However, it was the hard-nosed Bald Eagle defense that controlled this game nearly the whole way. There's nothing... Uh fancy about us. I mean, we're, if you want a physical, you want to fight, we're going to fight. You know, it's just the way it is. And, you know, that we challenged the kids at for, you know, last four weeks. We knew it was going to be a really physical game because BG was, you know, fast, physical, big up front. As for that gritty defensive performance, Bishop Guilfoyle found themselves in the red zone on three occasions outside of their touchdown. That Bald Eagle defense held strong and instead forced three missed field goals, one of which was a block. Those field goals came from 23, 34, and 41 yards, with Cameron Watkins bursting through the line and deflecting that 41-yarder. While from the outside looking in, it seems as if the Eagles showed a bend-don't-break mindset on the red zone opportunities. From the start of camp, it was a different attitude. Absolutely. I mean, we had to come out hard. That was the key. And, you know, we got the guys riled up. We came out here and it was it was that everything you got attitude. That's what we needed and that's what we showed up with. With the offense struggling on the other side of the ball for Bald Eagle, quarterback Carson Nagel felt as if that gritty defensive performance gave the offense the breathing room they needed to capitalize on their chances. But I mean, when you have a defense that can come out and set the tone like they did, and a couple big hits, I mean, that gets everybody riled up. So I mean, that's a very good offensive line, very good running back, and we were able to stop him. So I think that just like helped motivate the rest of the team and pushed us to what happened here. Friday's contest marked the first for Bald Eagle in the Laurel Highlands Conference, and its newfound attitude could help spark success in a highly competitive league. The Bald Eagle Eagles, they're going to look to keep their defensive success soaring into next week against Central Cambria. Reporting in studio, I'm Justin Chevalella. Huntington looks to make it two in a row against the Mountaineers as they travel to Phillipsburg. The Bearcats, winner of nine, the last 11 against P.O. snapped a two-game win streak for the Mountaineers. As we get things ready to go, Bearcats on their own 35. It's going to be a fumble as Ashton Steele loses the ball and the Mountaineers recover possession. Big celebrations there now. Bearcats with the ball again. Eric Mycut, the quarterback, drops back, looking to make a move, throwing, and that one is intercepted by Lucas Peterson. 
as once again the Mountaineers regain possession on a nice return, setting things up for their offense. Now Mountaineers in the red zone trailing by seven. Going to go with a run play here to Sam McDonald, who's going to punch that one into the end zone with the score being tied in the second quarter. Now, here's Mountaineers quarterback Zach Myers letting the ball go deep to Lucas Peterson. Caught for a long touchdown. The celebration's there, letting the Mountaineers get to a 19-7 lead. And now the two-point conversion, another throw. That one going to be good as the short pass goes to McDonald, leading to a 21-7 lead at the end of the third quarter. The Mounties were able to come out on top and win that one 35-7 for another season opening win. The Blue Devils look to right their wrongs from last season as Bellwood Antis heads to Penns Valley to take on the Rams. The last time these two teams met, ooh, it didn't go Bellwood Antis' way 42 to nothing in favor of Penns Valley, but the Blue Devils looking for revenge. Four minutes remaining in the second quarter, Penns Valley running back Ty Watson. A little shake and back, bake action. You've seen this one before. Nothing but daylight in front of him. He takes it 71 yards to the house as Penns Valley doubles its lead 14 to nothing. Third quarter, Sam score. Bellwood Antis running back Alex McCartney fumbles the ball and Penns Valley scoops it up, stopping Bellwood's momentum on offense. We jump now later in the third quarter. It's quarterback Jackson Romig finding John Meyer over the middle for a 19-yard touchdown. Puts Penns Valley up 21 to nothing. And the Rams would go on to take this one 33 to 21. 12 in the opener, Penns Valley with a dominant 33 to 12 win in week one. The Rams hit the road to face Bedford in week two as the Blue Devils. They'll look to pick up their first win at home against Westmont Hilltop. Now let's take a look at more action from around District 6. State College took down Williamsport 49 to 20. Meanwhile, Mifflin County handled business against Central Mountain. They win 41 to 6. Clearfield with the comeback victory against the Golden Eagles, beating Tyrone 29-21. And Central Cambria holds off Bishop McCourt 15-10. Richland takes down the Penn Cambria Panthers by a final score of 26-21. And Ridge handles Cottonmouth Valley 34-7. Northern Bedford with a beatdown on Southern Huntington. That game was called after the half 50-7. And Everett kneeled out the last play, beating West Branch 21-6. After a 1-9 season, the Bellflint Red Raiders took, look to get out on the right foot this season, but the Central Dragons stand in the way. This marks the first meeting between these squads since their time in the Mountain League back in 2020, but this one would end up being a very one-side affair. We'll pick things up with Ethan Eli Muffler, who hits a wide open Jacob Benton, who takes that one down the sideline, looking to get just one more block, but he'll be escorted out of bounds and leading up to the red zone on the next play, a fullback, a fullback. Yes, you heard that right. Hunter Smith takes it in and punches it in for Central, putting it up six to nothing. And in case Hunter Smith hadn't done enough, he's going to line up here to kick the extra point, and it is indeed good, seven to nothing. That'd be five for five. Hunter Smith would go on extra points just in the first half. Now four minutes to go in the first. Muffler hits Jacob Benton yet again, and this time he's going to break free. He's going to get that block free down the sideline. Does he have enough leg room? He's going to out the defenders. A little track meet finished with a Jordan shrug for a big touchdown there and a 14-point lead for the Dragons. And they would get it done on defense, too, as Jack Dunn gets the interception, which would result in a scoring drive later. But before the halftime could even get going, Jack Dunn got it done on the other side of the ball with this slick cutback going all the way to that near side pylon for another big touchdown. Central played a near perfect game on both sides of the ball as you see the celebrations there, leaving Belfont with a 49 to nothing road victory. Backed by a huge game from Hunter Smith, Central opens their season with a victory and will host Somerset. Meanwhile, Belfont will look to bounce back against Chestnut Ridge next week. Before the season started, two local leagues agreed to a conference merger. The Mountain League joined the Laurel Highlands Athletic Conference, creating a 22-team league. It's split into four divisions, two in the west and two in the east. This affects many of the teams in our area, including Tyrone, Belfont, Penns Valley, Phillipsburg Osceola, Bellwood Antis, Central Cambria, Penn Cambria, and Bishop Guilfoyle. Each team will play a nine-game conference schedule. It's rivalry week in Hollidaysburg as the Golden Tigers host the visiting Altoona Mountain Lions. Altoona looks to make it three straight against the 
Hollingsburg after the Golden Tigers won three in a row from 2018 to 2020. Four, 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Bron Mosley breaks free for a big gain up the middle. He's cut down and tempers begin to flare as he's hit late. Some tempers boiling over. A Holidays player takes a tumble. Now we jump ahead into the second quarter. Five minutes left. Drew Weiland zip once over the middle to Jay Alberano for a first down and puts Hollingsburg in the red zone. Two plays later, Weiland lowers the shoulder in for a five yard touchdown. The Golden Tires take the lead for the first time today. They go up 6 0 because their extra point was blocked. Less than a minute before the half, it's Weiland again using his legs and he's looking like a gazelle. Look at the change of direction there, making the defender slip, finds the corner and finds Pater. And immediately following that, it's Weiland again. It's the Weiland show all the way in this first half, barreling in for a two point conversion, makes it 14 to nothing, heading into the half. And Altoona would fight back in the second half, but it wasn't enough as Hollidaysburg walked away victorious, 21 to 13. Again, it's Hollidaysburg taking this one, 21 to 13, in the backyard rivalry as the Golden Tigers will take a trip next week to Cumberland, Maryland to face the Allegheny Campers next week, while Altoona opens their home slate against Taylor Alderdice. Coming up, we take a look at Penn State during their final days of fall camp. But first, we'll take a look at some scores from around the P1AA. We'll see you after the break. Hello and welcome back to After the Whistle, brought to you by Com Radio, Center County Report, and Penn State's Chapter of Awesome. Penn State wraps up their fall camp ahead of their home opener against the West Virginia Mountaineers. Nittany Lions are coming off a 35-21 win over the Utah Utes. This marks the first season since 2019 without Sean Clifford under center. With a new quarterback running the offense, the defense could play a huge factor in the team's success, especially second-year linebacker Abdul Carter. You know, Abdul's a perfect example of a guy kind of second half of the season really took off. You know, he's really kind of kept that momentum through spring ball and summer camp. Uh, so we expect him to have a, you know, have a big year for us. We need him to have a big year for us. I think like the more reps I got, the more I was in the game, the more different teams we play. I just seen a lot of different things. And you really start to notice that a lot of the teams, they're not really doing much things different. It's really the same thing, just in a different just in a different way, so I started to learn off that. Saturday at 7.30 p.m. You can listen live on Penn State Com Radio with coverage starting at 6.30. Well, Matt Abdul Carter, one of my favorite players to watch from the Philadelphia area, went to LaSalle High School. He should be flashing in his true sophomore season. Yeah, I'm just excited to see football back in Beaver Stadium. Just eight days away, they open under the lights. You can't ask for much more from the Nittany Lions. Well, week one is in the books, and we'll be with you all season long until the clock strikes triple zeros in the state playoffs. But for now, I'm Mac Young. And I'm Matt Scazzo. We'll be back next week for more high school football action right here on After the Whistle. <laughs>